welcome to another episode of the Cryptid Ramblers podcast. My name is Scott, and across from me is Callum. Hello, hello. How are we doing, mate? Very well. Yeah, not too bad at all. Yeah? Yeah. Happy to get up on a Sunday morning again? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Glad to see the end of the week, that's yeah. for sure. <laughs> Tell me about it. Tell me about it. It's been a hectic couple of weeks for for me on my part, at the very least. Yeah, it's definitely been been one of them. Not as, as busy, thankfully, but um, just as... Uh, Painful, nonetheless. Yeah. I think it's worse when it's like in terms of work when it's dead and you've got yeah. not much going on. I think that's worse got, than when you're up against it. Got to make yourself busy. <laughs> oh, mate, yeah, yeah. Uh, too often, at least when I'm working from home, I can yeah, you got I no, can get away with it. I've got yeah. no one looking over my shoulder. But when you're in the office and I'm having to look busy for six hours, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I start got, to run out of menial got, tasks. You've got no momentum or anything like oh, that. No. Have you? None at all. Motivation, nothing. But yeah. at least it's starting to get a little bit brighter. Spring is on its yes, way. Yes, there is that. Absolutely. What a week. I know, right? Still a bit nippy, but uh, certainly been nice and sunny at least. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well apart from the uh, old Saharan dust cloud. Yeah. What was over. that about? Oh, that, that was just. Know. That was weird. Yeah. That was really weird. But I, I came out and it looked like my car had um, had been uh, off roading or something like that. Yeah. Exactly. That's that's what I thought when I saw mm. that was like the orange. Weird, yeah. like orange hue, sort of in the sky, and then there's just like dust and happened a couple mud of years everywhere. Ago. And it happened a couple of years ago as well, and I remember that. Yeah. It was, um, but yeah, it was odd, like this weird yellow hue that came yeah. over everything. Wasn't expecting it, or I hadn't heard of anything to say, like you know, to expect that it was happening. And then you wake up, and I'm like, what's going on? I was expecting <laughs> the end of the world. <laughs> I was expecting another uh, weird creature flap or something like yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the merging of dimensions. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> More sightings yeah, or something. I know, yeah, right. Absolutely. Yeah, so, um, yeah, it's been an interesting it has. read up on, on this particular one. And obviously, this has followed on yeah. from uh, El Chupacabra. And, it has. And uh, yeah. we're, we're, we're certainly going to be looking back on maybe one of our older episodes, one of our first episodes. A couple, I think, for, certainly um, from what I've I found. There's, there's mm. going to harken back to, well, three episodes, I guess, if you include uh, oh, Chupacabra really? from, from oh, last yep. time. Yeah. Yeah, it's but I mean, be, um, we'll be mentioning uh, old John Keel. And uh, John the Kill. Mothman yeah. is Mothman, yeah. a couple of different connections, and maybe even a further theory on yeah. Mothman as well. And a, and a yeah, supposed link, and uh, and also the uh, the Men in Black mm. supposedly oh, uh, Men in Black turn up, turn up, yeah, Ooh. for one that I found from not that long ago, um, nice. as well it's, uh, from the uh, other side of the pond. So um, yeah, well, that, some, te- that is ten where they tend to knock about, isn't it? yeah, more often than not. Um, so, yeah, yeah. So it's going to be uh, it's, g- it's going to be a good one. Sweet, I think. Excellent. But before we do get into it, indeed, we've got to say a big thank you to our Patreons. We do. We've got James, Justin, and Monica. We have. Yes. But thank you very much for your continued support, guys. Thanks, very, guys. Very much appreciated. Much obliged. Yep. Um, and also, guys, go and check out our merch store. Uh, it's buythatmerch.co.uk forward yep. slash. Cryptid Ramblers. That's it. Yep. Go and check it out, guys. They've got some great designs on there. Uh, we've had uh, a bit of interest in there as well. Yeah, we have. Yeah. And um, I'm going to add a few more different colour schemes as well. Yeah, a few colour schemes and a, a couple requested. of um, a couple of simpler um, sort of designs mm. um, that have been sort of, yeah, suggested by listeners. We're thinking so, uh, uh, utter nonsense. <laughs> yeah. In yeah. particular. That's definitely going to get a t-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you're going to get a t-shirt, you better say utter nonsense. It's got to be that one, it? isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Even, it, even it applies if it, to everything. <laughs> everything right now. <laughs> yeah. Everything Absolutely right now. Absolutely everything. Utter yeah. nonsense. <laughs> yeah. Oi, pack it in you. It's utter nonsense. <laughs> exactly. We could even make it a charity t- t-shirt with the way things are going. Oh, blimey. Wouldn't we have to? <laughs> Good grief. Dear oh Lord. Did, yeah. you see, I saw, did you see that uh, old David Cameron had uh, jumped in a lorry? He was driving over there. He won't. No. Yeah. David Cameron. Really? Yep. David Cameron was doing it. Well. Would he have a, a, a well, pig in the passenger seat? Was cer- it? There was certainly a picture opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a long journey. It's a long journey. <laughs> might, get, might get a bit lonely. <laughs> At least have a ham sandwich. <laughs> yeah, well, that's one way of putting it. <laughs> Dirty man. <laughs> Oh, mate, you've got to watch those Etonians, mate. you got to watch them. They're into everything. Oh, aren't they just? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, um, I've got to address a few corrections from last episode. Yes. I do. I've yes. uh, got a few corrections to do um, about Puerto Rico, in fact. Um, no, no. I, 
Puerto Rico. There you go. There you go. <laughs> if you could get me to do it. Puerto Rico. <laughs> or Puerto Rico. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or you still haven't Sorry. done it. I know I haven't. I know. You're, you're, I know. you're not brave in it, are you? I know, I'm not. <laughs> mm. <God>, Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so um, I think uh, in a little bit of my own ignorance, really, um, I, I think I, had, I understood a certain amount of it, not with regards to being able to vote and whether or not they were citizens and everything. So mm. I knew that, that Puerto Rico was um, a territory yes. of, of the United States. Um, and I, I understood that they were citizens, but I, I understand as well that they can't vote on on the presidency when they live in Puerto Rico, but they can... If, if they they're mainland, move, if they yeah. become, if they move on to the mainland, um, active military can vote, mm. um, retired military can vote as well, um, regardless of mm. whether or not they're on the mainland or yeah. in one of the territories. So, mm. um, but yeah, so that, when I say like almost like a dictatorship sort of mm. thing, I, mm, it's, it's as such. But I think there was more so a tongue-in-cheek sort of offhanded oh, comment right. that I made. Gotcha. So, no offense, men, cool. guys. No, it's all good. I think, man, it's all you know, good. But it was uh, just out of my own ignorance, I guess. Yeah. Well, we're here to learn. I think. Well, I think ignorance is probably being a bit harsh on yourself, but <laughs> 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 we, you know, we're here to, you know, we're here to learn. So, like with anything, you know, if we say something that isn't, you know, quite yeah. right, then please let us know. And I'm uh, never too proud to uh, stand up and no, admit absolutely a, admit a mistake or where I'm wrong. So absolutely, yeah. indeed, try and better that, guys. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> and I too am incredibly humble. <laughs> what a guy. What a guy. What a guy. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, we've been looking into gargoyles. Gargoyles we have. and gargoyle. Whatever they may be called absolutely. around the world. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. It's um, it, it's it kind of fed off, um, or, or it did feed off the, the last um, episode. Mm. Um Notably, the uh, listener uh, story um, that we, you know, that we read out because, uh, yeah, as, as it turns out, the the descriptions given, although at the time it was believed that the, the creature seen was a chupacabra, mm. um, it's uh, since kind of transpired that it might actually be more closely linked to um, a gargoyle, um, yeah. which, um, yeah, is quite prominent um, uh, in Puerto Rico. It's you know, it's even a, a sort of a legend. You know, in its own right, much like the chupacabra and, and sort of other cryptids that they get. Um, there's a lot of crossover between the two of them that I found. And yeah, there's a lot. I had to steer clear of Puerto Rico myself when I was looking into it because all I was finding was just El Chupacabra. That was it. Yeah, there's um, a lot of links, and and I think it's it's deliberate in a sense because I think when you look at the you know the the descriptions, you know the differences. <laughs> the only main difference really is. Um, fact that one's got wings and and one hasn't mm. <laughs> that's pretty much yeah. the only sort of telltale sort of difference really or, or sign that i could see um mm. based on the, the physical um descriptions at least um but yeah of course it, it it you know translates to you know other parts of the the world mm. um you know with a possible origin of in uh la Francais. yes yeah um you know the stretching you know, over to the states and other European countries um, as well. So yeah, it's um, yeah, it's taken us far and wide this one. I've which found is, uh, um, which is good. I found three particular stories that have come out of Chile um, that right, seem okay. to be around well the early two thousands anyway. So right. it sort of coincides with the sightings that we have in um, in Puerto Rico mm. in the the mid to late nineties there was seemed to be another weird uh, yeah. creature flap. Yeah. Um and this might be the tail end of it. Yeah. Um yeah, I've possibly. come across I've come across a theory as to why these these um uh, strange flaps te- like they tend to happen. Like they, they'll yeah. they'll suddenly appear. Yeah. And it will happen for five, ten years, whatever. Yeah. And then it just they stop almost as sudden as they started. Mm. Um, I came across a, an interesting theory, which I'll go on to later on. Nice, okay. Well, I've got, I've got three kind of stories, I guess, as well. Um, one is sort of French myth. Um, one one takes us over to Texas, 
and um, one uh, brings us back to uh, our uh, our shores. Oh, really? Got old Blighty, yeah. Blighty, which yeah. Uh, <laughs> when I when I read it, you'll you'll know why it, it piqued my interest. But I think it will. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think you'll like it. Oh, okay. I, 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 with all the prior research I'd done on that particular subject, mm. this has never come up until I started searching goggles specifically, and then it was like bang, like. Okay, now, now you, yeah. you you have piqued my interest, sir. <laughs> yeah, you like it. <laughs> you like it. But um, yeah, before we get into all that, because we're sort of jumping ahead of ourselves. Yeah, go on. Through the excitement. Through the little breadcrumbs. <laughs> um, just to, yeah, start with some of the, kind of the basics for those that, that don't know. Um, now, there are a number of definitions um, of the gargoyle, and I'm sure we all know, you know, at least one of them. Um the most uh, likely one that everyone's going to know is, is of course, the the architectural meaning, but then there's also the cryptid sort of fantasy uh, definition, mm. um, as well as the, uh, you know, a local um, sort of definition to, to Paul Strieco as well, although it, from what I can see, it didn't necessarily originate sort of from there, which is quite um, quite telling of how prominent it is in that, that sort of mm. region. Um, now... In terms of the architectural definition, um, this, like I say, this is the one that I think most people will, will be familiar with. Um, in design, they are typically carvings of grotesque figures, faces, or creatures that are perched along the rooftops of buildings. Mm. Um, now, the original purpose being um, that they would direct um, excess water that would build up on the roofs of, of buildings or in uh, guttering, and direct it away from the building to prevent yeah. water damage, basically, um, because of the type of stone that was used in um, sort of very early construction. Constant water flow would eventually erode all of the stone away. Yeah, and exactly. a lot of it was decorative as well. So it was to prevent um, it was to prevent erosion, basically, yeah. which is why um, the the goggles would be hollowed out. Mm. It'd be a it'd be a, a drainage. System. Yeah, so most most buildings would have been made out of sandstone. That's it, sandstone. Yeah, yeah so and sandstone obviously water would have just would yeah. literally washed it away yeah. over you know over time. Um, uh, and interestingly, um, or I thought so at least, it it wasn't until the seven, I think it was, it was as recent as the seventeen hundreds, like seventeen twenties, that the, um, the uh, building regs in London um, actually made it compulsory to use um, what we now know as, as downpipes. Oh really? Yeah, but up until then they were still using the forms offs. of gargoyles, basically, yeah, or, or some sort of yeah drain off uh, from the oh, roof. Okay, so it was quite interesting. Um, <clears throat> now, although that's the intended purpose, the more popular belief is that they were used to protect the buildings from evil spirits, um, and the open mouths of the the gargoyle were symbolic of them um, sort of devouring. Um, little spirits. Yeah, basically. So, so you'd the, find the them great on more would be the thing that would actually um, repel the the evil spirits. Yeah, yeah. So you'd find them typically on sort of church, church buildings, mostly on churches, really gothic wasn't it? churches and mm. and that kind of thing. Um, and so yeah, that's the kind of the holy belief, I guess, is that they're actually a protector of you know the building. Mm. Um, but it's actually just a waterway. Yeah. <laughs> in in well, I guess in, in theory. Well, yeah, in theory. I mean, I like based on its I intended like purpose. Where that come from? The story of where that came from as well, um, which is yeah. really quite old. It's about fifteen hundred years old. The story itself of uh, it was a Saint Romanus, wasn't it? Um, yeah, that's the the French myth story yeah. um, that, I've, that I've got. Yeah, <laughs> La, La Gugelle. <laughs> yeah. Um, Definitely saying that wrong. Yeah, it's pr- oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I struggle with English. Don't mind anything else. Um, <laughs> now, yeah, so that that's the, the the sort of the more popular understanding of what a gargoyle is, uh, based on the sort of architectural nature of it. Mm. Um, we've of course then got the cryptid slash monster version of the definition, um, which in fact was inspired by the gargoyles that you see on the the buildings. Yeah. Um, the from what I could see, the first fictional story that was actually taken from stonework um, was written in around 1932, um, and it was based on a, 
um, where a stonemason accidentally infused all of his hate and lust into these two stone gargoyles, um, so much so that they then sort of came to life. And when he tried to destroy them, they killed him. Gotcha. And so that's where they got the kind of the monster sort of aggressive mm. sort of tail, Hel- I suppose. Yeah. Alien of the underworld sort of thing. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Gotcha. Um, in, in, tr- in true fashion, at, at some point later in the sort of 1900s, Disney swooped in and uh, obviously created the... The TV show Gargoyles, yeah. which depicted them in a much nicer I kind of human that. friendly um, sort of state, I guess. Yeah, great cartoon. Yeah, yeah. brilliant. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how. I mean, I remember watching it when I was a, a kid, which was would have been around like, sort of the late eighties. But I don't know if it if it no, came it out in, sooner than that, uh, like earlier than that, later, sorry, like yeah. the seventies or something. No, 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 it wasn't. It was it was more of like a nineties sort of cartoon. I remember. I was nineties, was it? Yeah, oh, it was right, a bit okay. Later than that. Mm. Right, okay. Um, now, in terms of description um of what a gargoyle would look like again most people could probably decipher from you know what the the stonework um would look like mm. um but but generally speaking um it's a, a winged uh, humanoid with demonic features for example horns tail talons um and sometimes they're even depicted with uh with beaks yeah. um but then Obviously, drawing from the similarities to the chupacabra, um, yeah, as you say, they about five to seven feet in height, uh, winged, you know, red eyes, mm. dark figure, um, and yeah, it's just that sort of humanoid stature which seems to sort of carry through um, yeah. all of the descriptions. It's one of the kind of, in fact, c- consistent like, ones. Yeah, that's us. I, I, with the ones that I found, like the the, the encounters that I found, all of the descriptions are the same which makes me think that yeah with it being geographically similar and mm. uh, uh, time wise similar yeah that potentially it could be the same creature yeah I mean that's certainly a strong belief um you know certainly in, in Puerto Rico as, as I've sort of recently f- um, found out as I know you have as well mm. um is that yeah you've got chupacabra gargoyle mothman they're all kind of one of the same because you rightly say their descriptions match from region to region mm. and they were all you know spotted around the same sort of time yeah just different you know sort of parts of the world so is it the same you know creature you know traveling and using that whole interdimensional mm. thing that we've discussed before on on here um or is there more than one of them i well, and they've sort well of, i did find uh, one that had uh that saw two of them flying about so potentially ah, okay. it could be yeah, I mean, yeah, mm. it could be a, a, an actual creature, an actual species of yeah. something. And they just adapt to their surroundings, which is why there's maybe slight differences in possibly in some. Yeah, possibly. But yeah, yeah, it's um, yeah. I mean, I'd like the, I mean, the the origin story, the old one, um, mm. the one of uh, Saint Romanus. Yeah, um, I was going to come on to that in a second, oh, actually. Okay. Yeah, unless right. unless you've no, no, I've, oh, I've right, got okay. it here, but yeah, I'll let you, I'll let you um, on the. So yeah, just before we jump into that, the the rough translation of of gargoyle or, or gargoyle in French, gargoyle, gargoyle, um, means uh, gar to swallow, and gully is like throat or or gullet, mm. um, which you're obviously relating to the original purpose of it being a, a water sprout, basically on on top of yep. uh, buildings. Um, so always, yeah, they're always depicted as a, with a long neck and open maw and and everything. Yeah, aren't they? so yeah, basically, yeah. It makes sense. So that's yeah. So that's um yeah. So that's that. But yeah, g- going on to um yeah, we'll see. You, you know what you're rightly saying. What I mentioned uh, sort of at the start in in French myth, la gagole was a dragon with bat like wings, a long neck, and the ability to breathe fire. Saint uh, Romanus um, subdued the creature with a crucifix, or he captured it. There's a, a sort of slight difference in the. Yeah, belief into kind of what he how, how he captured it whether it was by the crucifix or whether it was just yeah however you would catch yeah. a dragon i suppose yeah. <laughs> um the <laughs> ropes i don't know a <laughs> net i don't know would you have a net back yeah. in it i don't know um the creature was uh taken back to rouen and uh burned um but as its neck and head was uh tempered to obviously allow it to breathe fire um it it didn't burn um, so instead, 
it was mounted on the walls of a newly built church um, to fend off evil spirits. Mm. Yeah, and, and that, so that's kind of that's what I found um, as the as the true origin. But then the idea of um, the architectural sort of purpose of these creatures goes back to um, Egyptian times in where they actually might not have been like this weird cryptid look, looking creature, but they certainly used the head of a lion for the same sort of purpose yes. yeah, yeah. that was um, being used on these churches now. Um, one one yeah. of the things that I found that I thought was quite interesting with, with that story was the yeah. other, either he subdued it with a, a crucifix mm. or he ha- had the help of um, a single volunteer who was a condemned man. Yeah. Um, so th- yeah, he was that. he was ready for the gallows sort of thing or the yeah. or the guillotine, uh, which to save it may his be. head. <laughs> yeah, to save he his head. He went and hunted a dragon. <laughs> went and hunted a dragon. <laughs> I'm going to hunt a dragon. Anyone want to come with? Yeah, I'll do it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'll get <laughs> yeah. out of here. <laughs> yeah. Even if I bump you on the head and, s- and get out of here, I'll be, yeah, <laughs> crack it, yeah. mate. I'll do that. Um, but th- what <sighs> what was great as well that I thought was um, yeah. the in commemoration of mm. this story, the yeah. Archbishop of uh, Rouen. Um, are actually granted the right to free a prisoner on the day of the uh, reliquary is right, okay. brought into procession. So a reliquary is a is a, a box with relics in it. Right. So it would hold the relics of Saint Romanus. Right. Okay. And when that was brought through on procession, the Archbishop had the right to release one prisoner. Wow. So it still what, does. It, still today. Still or? to this day. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah, which I think is. Quite interesting. It's quite cool that they've sort of kept that. I can't imagine it would. My it would, name's it... Brian. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I'm the Messiah. Uh, so is my wife. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. What, yeah, you know, it's like I think I thought that was quite quite an interesting yeah. fact. Really. And I like that actually. Yeah, I didn't. Mm. Um, yeah, that I didn't find. So I, I you know, I like that. So it's, it's yeah. surprising that they still do it. You know, sort of to this day, especially when you consider what people uh, were put away for back then, is probably very different yeah, <laughs> to what they are yeah. now. So, well, yeah, I mean, you'd have to be like petty theft or something like that that you know you get let off. <laughs> that's right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can't be doing that anymore. Yeah, but yeah, I've, I've, with that story and everything, I look at it yeah. in a different light. I see it as you know the, the, what I've brought up previously in mm. other episodes about the allegory of it. You know, yeah. the dragon being the serpent and the serpent mm. worship, the Christian coming along destroying the, the serpent. Yeah, it's um. Very much like uh, St. Patrick driving the snakes out of Ireland, sort of yeah. thing. Um, so, yeah, probably not <laughs> really going out there. Probably not what happened, going out hunting for Not getting off dragons, a dragon or anything yeah. like that. But Probably something that symbolised the evilness of a, it's of probably, a dragon. It's probably, probably a, more a, so to, a person. <laughs> to, to guard off the, the pagan gods. Yeah. Possibly. Yeah. Seeing as they often built, like Christians often built uh, churches... On pagan sites, yeah, as well, yeah, exactly. Um, so I suppose just to go into a couple of encounters, unless you want to kick off with um, with one, I've got, I've got you, yeah, yeah, you crack on, yeah, okay, because um, I've got a few little bits and pieces I want to say, and then I went on my oh, right, encounters okay. that I found. All right, I'll just um, yeah, chime in as and when, gotcha, as always. Um, so in 1986, a NASA activist by the name of Frank Shaw. Um, had a run-in with a mysterious winged creature. Um, he was walking from his car after a long shift from the basically one of the space center buildings across quite a long car park to to his car. Um, when he looked up above him, um, which he says a feeling over sort of come him that make so he was compelled to look up. Yeah, he had no other reason to, but there was just something in him. This kind of deep rooted feeling that was just like. Mm. Up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so, you know, and so and so he did. Um, and he saw a black humanoid figure perched up on the edge of one of the space center buildings that he'd just um, exited from. Um he also claimed that it had two massive uh, bat like wings either side of its torso. Um now the description given has been linked to at, at the time of writing this, it was linked to the Mothman. Um, which gotcha. we've uh, we've obviously we've already mentioned. I do um, know this story, but rem- remind me when about it was. Was it around about like the sixties going into the seventies? No, uh, uh, eighty six. Oh, it was eighty six. Eighty six. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
Uh, and <laughs> quite random, because this was an American website, it's even been linked to the Owl Man of Cornwall. Owl Man of Cornwall? So I think we've got our next episode. <laughs> <laughs> the yes. Owl Man of Cornwall, honestly. Um, and I'm pretty pretty sure, you know, very good. Who? I'm pretty sure I've... Um, <laughs> There's a there's a it's either a guy or a uh, amateur like film yeah, company on YouTube. About. I'm pretty sure they've made a horror film about the Owl Man. Yeah, is um, it he's like dressed in like a suit sort of? He's thing, in like it? a old yeah like a sort of Victorian looking kind of suit with just the giant owl head, yeah. <laughs> basically like humanoid owl owl figure. Um, yeah, I've seen that. That's, that's yeah. cracking. They it's like great. A couple it's of good. jump scares. A couple of videos of yeah yeah, yeah. no exactly. Uh, it might be. That, I think that might have been in Russia, I think. I don't know. But yeah. Certainly on the continent. Yeah. But no, it's, yeah. So we might have um, already found <laughs> our next episode. Um, but uh, but yeah, so not just the description of the actual figure itself. So, you know, sort of tall, dark figure, winged, you know, red eyes. Mm. Um, the other sort of link between all of those is the feeling of irrational fear in anyone who witnesses these creatures. And that's exactly what he that's exactly what he had when mm. um he had that sort of compulsion to look up, even though he had no reason to, and just saw the figure that's weird. sort of perched up there. Um now Shaw claimed that the creature seemed to take joy in the fact that he was filled with terror. So it was it wanted him to look at it mm. so he so the creature could watch him like uh, shit his pants. <laughs> More may, or less. Maybe feeding off of that fear. Feeding off the fear, yeah. yeah. Um so at this point, um, Shaw uh, claims that the creature unfurled its wings and flew off. He jumped in his car and drove in the darkness uh, home. He was too scared to look back to see if he was being followed or even turn his headlights on. He just, just screamed go. home, yeah. <laughs> um, when he returned home, he told his wife and, and daughter, who who believed him, um, you know, much against their, their own sort of better judgment, but because of how he was as a person... Mm. and how shaken up he was and just sort of how irrational he was being. They had no reason but to believe him, gotcha. really. Yeah. Um, but they asked him to not tell anyone, um, especially his superiors uh, at work, um, through fear of being mocked uh, or, you know, even worse. You're crazy, Johnson. Cra yeah, exactly. You're fired. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you know what? It's funny you say that because it's actually called Johnson <laughs> Space <he> really? Center. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, so Frank agreed, um, with his wife and daughter, uh, didn't tell anyone. Um, however, weeks, uh, passed and the interaction was, was driving him mad that, you know, cause he wasn't able to share it. He couldn't, you know, sort of talk to anyone about it. He was just kind of, you know, stewing on it. So eventually he plucked up the courage and did decide to tell, um, one of his superiors. Mm. Now to his surprise and delight, uh, to an extent, uh, he wasn't met with mockery, but instead support. Oh, that's interesting. His superior even admitted that he wasn't the first employee at Johnson Space Center to report such a sighting, mm. but also that they had opened a secret file on it based on the number of sightings from members of staff. Um, but the, the actual reason why they opened the file was on the basis that two of the Space Center's German Shepherds um, were found brutally mutilated um, around the, at the same site of um, Shaw's sighting, so somewhere around the car park. Right. Um, well, that definitely ties in with all the other stories that we've got with this. Yeah. Um, now, following the sort of unusual confession, although it was met with you know support by his direct superiors. The story made its way up the chain of command, and within no time at all, he was visited by a NASA security operatives, as they were described. Ah, okay. I.e., the men in the black. Men in black. <laughs> yep. Um, and yeah, as in, in typical fashion, they said to Frank and his family that it was in their best interests um, not to come out with their story, and to not, you know, sort of tell, not to tell anyone. Cool. Um, which is why it. I think it took something like eighteen to twenty years after it happened for Frank's daughter to actually come forward and, and retell mm. the story. So this is her account of what she remembers her dad telling her. Gotcha. Because um, he obviously followed the advice given by who he believed was his superiors from the, yeah, 
Yeah, some that's s- a that's security. Some, that's some <laughs> solid advice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. From the, Strongly uh, worded advice. Yeah. That's a security. Um. So. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. The Armenian black turned up and said, "You need to keep shtum about this. Um, don't don't tell anyone." And mm. to his credit, from what I understand, Frank didn't. But about twenty years later, his, his daughter thought, "Fuck this! I'm Fuck I'm sharing you. this." <laughs> yeah. Possibly after he'd passed. And yeah, quite possibly. Yeah. Um. And yeah, and then decided to uh, to share it. So, yeah, I thought it was good. It was good for a number of reasons. Obviously, it harkens back to you know the Men in Black, and it obviously has that government involvement, which makes you think, well, what what did he see? You know, there's mm. got to be some. Well, the fact that they had a uh, they had a file on it, and that enough people had seen this following thing. animal mutilations again, and also, which follows a lot of the accounts that come from Puerto Rico as exactly. well, specifically. With, but that's uh, cattle, I think, as opposed to as opposed to dogs. Uh, but, yeah, well, uh, well, I've uh, got one that mentions dogs. As well, right? Okay. Um, Even the Mothman as well. The Mothman from Point yeah. Pleasant. There was that German Shepherd that went missing, and yeah, um, the guy's dog. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the the, the run off after couples, it, didn't the it? Two couples. Um, when they first saw Mothman, they shot back into into town from the. They're being followed by it, weren't they? They men- mentioned, <clears throat> excuse me, they mentioned seeing um, a, a large dog That's laying right. down yeah. on the side of the road. That's right. Yeah, well so. remembered. Yeah. So it's got something against uh, got something against Doesn't like canines, canines, which is interesting because one of the um, kind of lesser known descriptions is, uh, which I think you kind of briefly mentioned earlier, is that it does also sometimes take the form of a canine, like a hellhound, um, yeah, sort of type with the head of with the head of a dog. Yes, I've seen. So some, yeah, yeah. So it's yes, yeah, mm. it's, it's quite interesting. Um, now I've got this other one to go into. Do you want me to? I, or do you want to... Well, you holding your notes up like that, I did sort of see. Oh, no, that was just so I could read it. That wasn't intentional. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> but I saw what you have got, you got there, and it looks oh, quite it? Right, interesting. Okay. Yeah. But I... Um, yeah. You know what? Well, I'll go into I'll go into go something that I've got here. Go ahead. Um, I came across quite an interesting finding with regards to all of these animal mutilations and sightings of, of gargoyles. Yeah. Um, and it it stems from the work of an investigator of called Federico Alvarez. Okay. And this was over in Chile, in which he first made this sort of discovery. Now, right. because he he's also um, he's also a doctor. He's got a doctorate in um, I believe it was physics. Um, and when he was going out there and investigating these um, animal mutilations that were going on in around the area in which yeah. he lived in Chile, mm. um, one day doesn't know why he can't explain it but he ran back into his house and grabbed a geiger counter so right okay he just does he doesn't know why but he just thought oh i'll take that with me this time um he got a new call and went oh i'll take that with me and off he went um and he decided to use it on the carcass and he realized that it had unusually high spikes of radiation well above normal background right radiation levels um, yeah, because there's radiation levels to an extent, yeah. you know, kind of all around. So yeah. you know kind of where it, what point it hits to think, right, well, that's normal. Yeah. This went over and above that. Did so it? anyone that doesn't understand what a Geiger counter is, it's that device that you see scientists ha- like waving around in the air that makes a clicking noise. So for every click that happens, it's a particle of gamma radiation that hits the sensor. And so the higher the frequency of the clicking the more gamma radiation yeah. there is out there. So if you go over to like Chernobyl or something mm. like this or anywhere around the area. Your meter would break probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then you would as well. And then you would. Yeah, you'd yeah, start yeah. to decay and all. <laughs> um, but yeah, so th- what he found was in and around the area in which these animals would, were um, dying and being mutilated in a very, very similar fashion to what we was looking at with the chupacabra, mm. small puncture wounds, exsanguination. Yeah. You know the the body's basic. There's no blood. There's no form of struggle or yeah. anything like this. And uh, yeah, he was finding these high um, levels of radiation coming off of these carcasses. Right. Okay. Now the same. Um, it, uh, sorry, that was in Puerto Rico. Sorry, but the same was oh, happening okay. in Chile, where I've got a couple of the other stories coming up. Um, right. Gotcha. And in Guatemala as well, there was a doctor, Oscar Palele. Um, his assistants became incredibly ill after they investigated these mutilated corpses. Right. Um, he also heard about what 
um, Frederico Alvarez had done mm. and decided to take a guy counter as well. Right. And he found that exactly the same thing, incredibly high levels of radiation. And he was the, he was actually investigating um, these same uh, sightings of, of gargoyles and everything else like that. Right, okay. And where people had said, yeah, we saw this creature buy our livestock. It mm. matched this description. Um, our animal's dead. Go and have a look at it. And where the creature was standing, where they saw it, again, incredibly high spikes of gamma radiation. Right. So That's interesting. There seems to be this this weird sort of thing that's happening with regards to radiate radioactive creatures. Mm. Um, and so I followed this, this, uh, this, this path on it. And it, it apparently it's not a, it's not a new theory. It's actually <laughs> one that John Keel came up with decades earlier. Right. Okay. Um, Interesting. in and around the time in which he was investigating, uh, the Mothman up mm. in Point and Pleasant. So, John Keel was looking at this a couple of year, decades before the the flap in the nineties, going into the two thousands. Yeah, um, and he coined an idea that these creatures that emerge from these window areas, um, like winged humanoids in in particular. Yeah, um, that sometimes they have like a, a human like face, sometimes an animal like face, like you alluded to earlier, with mm. the, being almost like a canine sort of thing. Yeah, um, but they always have really dark skin and large bat like wings. Okay, yeah. Now, he came up with this idea that they are radioactive interdimensional interlopers. <laughs> right, okay. Yeah. It's yeah, a mouthful. That's, yeah. that's, that's a mouthful. I don't want to be saying that too often at a speech or <laughs> no. anything like that. Um, but he believed that when these creatures manifest, they produce huge amounts of energy. So right. whether or not, it, when, when you're crossing barriers, I mean, even if you think about it on a physics sort of level, to cross the barrier between our atmosphere and space requires a lot of energy that we have to produce mm. to create it um there's byproducts of that energy pollution yeah etc of course yeah. um so he's thinking that there's a very very similar sort of thing that happens with these creatures and when they exist in this reality they actually they begin to degrade because it seems like if you think about it, it's like everything else mm. you're born into this world and you're already starting to decay as you as you, as you go <laughs> you know that's that's basically what yeah. happens nothing ever really lasts eventually mm. through yeah. oxidization or whatever yeah. everything decays mm. um and one way that he believes that these creatures are decaying is um unstable atoms breaking down and losing energy in the form of radiation um right. in particular ionizing radiation oh so ionizing radiation is um is what occurs when um when these atoms break down and the electrons start shooting off and they interact with the molecules in the air, which creates a glow. Mm. Um, and we can see, oddly enough, we've seen this happen at the Great Pyramids. Right, okay. There's, um, there's been some images that people have been able to capture that there's this weird blue glow at the top of the Great Pyramids in Giza. Right, okay. The Great Pyramid you know, of yeah. Giza. Um, but there's, they've been able to see it in other places as well. When when I looked at this, I, it instantly made me think of of the Mothman mm. with regards to this radiation. People becoming sick because of radiation. Now, do you remember the, the the story of the young girl that had her eyes burned when she looked at the Mothman for too long? As she was looking at it through the window, right, and her eyes were burned. Yeah, yeah. and John Keel even made a made a distinction that he thought that maybe it was some form of radiation burn. Yeah. Um, so that's what made me think. Mm. Like, hang on, that's a bit, a bit strange. That yeah, a bit too close to home. That one. Yeah, yeah he might have actually similarities. Been, he might have actually been onto something there yeah. with it being a radioactive creature. But because of who he was and what he was into, people just naturally yeah. discounted it. And unfortunately, like later on in his life, he he really lost a lot of faith in the work that he'd done, and mm. he'd basically decided that it was all for nothing, which is a shame, really, yeah. because he did some fantastic work. He produced. Some brilliant investigations. Yeah, definitely. He did. Um, but what I found quite interesting about that, that, that could actually, the idea of them breaking down and, and decaying on yeah. a radioactive level could actually answer a lot of things. So why we don't see any corpses, any carcasses of these creatures, um, often why there's no, no physical evidence left behind because it's 
decayed. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, yeah. it's a... That could be, yeah. could be it. I mean, Very much so, yeah. Also, if you think about the idea of these, these window areas opening up, these portals opening up and allowing these creatures to move in and out, there was an interesting theory I came across with regards to that, but I'll, I'll get onto that in a bit. But these these areas, these window areas having to open up would, would require mm. a lot of energy to do it. Right. Whether or not it's electromagnetic energy or radioactive energy. Yeah. Um, but potentially that could be that could be an answer for why these flaps occur. Because it's, yeah, radiation true. is something that comes up as well. And we, we often forget about this when we're looking at these high strangeness encounters. Mm. So the lights in the sky, the UFO activity, Bigfoot and stuff like this. Yeah. Radio, radioactive or radiation um, is something that crops up quite a lot as well. And it's yeah, often they're not guilty of it myself. I often forget about that part mm. of it um, and, and don't look into it. Um, but the theory that I came across with regards to these interdimensional creatures was it was on a bit of a, like a, a new age sort of website, a bit of new age forum. So I won't get too flowery with it. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, it's about the idea of there being um, vertical and ho- and horizontal hierarchies within infinite universes. So right. think about it like this. So I'll try and describe it. So if you've got infinite universes that exist alongside each other yeah, and all the way down infinitely, mm. but they exist on the same plane, mm. then the idea is that Creatures can and people, energy, mm. matter, um, can travel and move between them. Yeah, um, with a, a cost sort yeah. of thing. So there have been stories about people moving between dimensions yeah. and and the. Well, there's one in the um, Arctic, isn't there? Because we're on a flat Earth, that's what people believe is on the other side of that ridge. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the Antarctic, the ice wall. Uh, sorry, Antarctic. Yeah, yeah the, the ice, ice wall. wall. Yeah. yeah, you don't want to go to the middle. You over want to go wall. to the outside. <laughs> yeah, and they go over the wall. <laughs> Bros before hose. <laughs> crows before hose. Crows, crows before, before hose. hose. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> John Snow. John Snow, bastard. Bastard. <laughs> so yeah, so the um, the idea is that these creatures can can move on a horizontal hierarchy, okay, yeah, but mm. it comes at a cost. So there's always going to be a decay of the energy, the matter, or or, or something. Now the, the the vertical hierarchy is where they talk about like transcending into energy, mm. you know, and that way if you are energy, you are able to, <coughs> to sustain yourself, sustain your existence, etc. Um, and it was uh, I remember coming across a similar sort of theory to this, um, and it was written and I made a note of it by a researcher and author called Dan Mitchell, and he came up with that theory that, that about humans passing between dimensions right such. okay so whether or not that's like um so for instance if these creatures were like there's, you've got to have a way of sustaining yourself in these areas mm-hmm. so that's potentially why maybe when we cease to exist in this reality yeah and we go on to potentially another existence yeah you've got to they've got to sustain themselves in some way so that's where you get like these um the idea of like a psychic leech or something like that, right? Okay. Drawing the energy off of someone to to maintain its existence. So it's maybe something that maybe once upon a time was yeah. human, and then that potentially became something else, like um, shadow people. I was say, could, I was just going to say, it could lend itself to that phenomena, or you know, just sort of ghosts Still and spirits in general. That that's, that's that they need that that sort of energy to manifest themselves, and mm. that's how they travel. Yeah. Or appear in our realm that, or dimension, however you want to. That is something that that comes up a lot with regards to sleep paralysis. Is that there is a shadow person mm. in the room when they're able to open up their eyes and have a look around. Yeah, and they're often feeling incredibly drained the next day. Yeah, like they've had no sleep at all. Yeah, potentially that could be something there. Yeah, quite possibly could potentially be it. But it's the idea as well that these creatures, these gargoyles, chupacabra in particular, that mm. that are drinking. The blood, they're sucking yeah. the blood out of these things. That maybe there's something in the blood that allows these creatures to exist in this reality without completely decaying. Right. Yeah. Food for thought, really. Yeah. I guess. Not like know, that. It's, yeah. It's, it's an idea, and um, well, it poses a different theory, doesn't it? Yeah. And again, like with regards to these um, window areas, 
maybe they're just opening up with enough energy to allow these creatures to move in mm. and out. Yeah. But the moment that they close, they can't get back out. Yeah. And then they can only last for a certain amount of time before they completely decay and they mm. cease to exist in, in this reality as well. Yeah. So yeah, I thought that was quite an interesting yeah, I like that. Quite an interesting theory. Yeah, it's cool, man. Yeah. I like that. Good work. Cheers, man. <laughs> I hadn't seen that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, like it was that. kind of a little bit of a combination of stuff that I've previously read over the years mm. and, and new ideas that are coming up and new things that are coming up and I've gone, Oh yeah, that makes sense. And yeah. maybe it could be an answer. The, the why these things happen, you know, yeah, why they happen, why they take the forms that they do. If if they're, you know, if they're, you know, um, you know, taking, you know, energy, and they want people to look at them, is that so they can get a direct source of energy? And because it's more often than not fear or and, and terror, is that why they take the form that they do to match the, as the emotion that they're well, reaping? On a on a scientific level, we know that scientists have discovered parallel universes. They know they that have, they're there. Yeah, they have, yeah. They know that they're there, but they just don't know exactly what they What's are. What's on the other side. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. But, yeah. you know, they're looking into it. We'll let them find out. Yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> yeah. not a job for us. You come back and let us know, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> if you come back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like some, like, event horizon bullshit. Yeah, like, yeah, just, nope. Just tie a rope around your, around your waist, mate. You'll be all right. <laughs> yeah. Get cracking. Yeah, we know how well that goes. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. So yeah. is that you? That's that's me. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Well, you I've got another got, one you want to? No, I've got my encounters after that, man. And, oh, okay. Which uh, potentially could back up what I've just said. Cool. Okay. Would you? Did you want to do this first no, then, or you, do you want to lead you into go that? For it, I've seen. Sure. I've seen what you've got there. I'm quite. <laughs> I've got a little note of your header. Oh, you, you, you saw yeah, that, did I you? Right. That. Okay. <laughs> so I want to hear about this. Okay. So, in September of two thousand. Uh, Colin Perks, a keen Arthurian researcher, mm-hmm. met with um, a, a lady who gave herself the name Sarah Key. That's what I'm going to say at this point. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, she basically called him completely out of the blue, um, quite um, quite sort of panicked, quite you know sort of hurried, but wanting to you know talk to him urgently about his you know kind of research, really kind of showing a you know an interest, mm. um, and yeah, and basically wanted to meet him about his studies. He was initially skeptical because he was like, "Who's this lady? Why is she calling me? Like, why does she want to meet? All this kind of stuff." Like, because it was completely out of the blue. Um, he was yeah. you know he was out kind of researching, digging, and you know kind of whatever else. So I wasn't expecting sort of such a call really. Um, anyway, he, you know, against his better judgment at the time, I guess he agreed to, you know, meet with us. So a few days later, um, she arrived at his house and opening the door, they met, they, you know, sort of introduced themselves and she advised that her superiors had requested that Perks cease any and all research regarding the legend of King Arthur. Yes, this has come up before in one of our episodes, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah, he um, he he still scoffed at the idea that he was being watched by you know shadowy figures, um, and this, was sorry to this came up in Women in Black, didn't it? This one, yeah, because it, yeah, yeah, because of her, yeah, Sarah of her. That's Sarah why Key. that name yeah. came to me head. I was like, I don't know that. Name. Yeah, um, gotcha. so yeah, so completely, he, he was completely dumbfounded by her request and just couldn't understand why she would be approaching him about that of all, you know of all things mm. um he he was skeptical and you know rightly so quite you know defensive um and essentially refused to give up his work mm. um until she was able to recall everything Colin had done in recent memory um so everything regarding his his work and his personal life right down to which pub he went to regularly and what he drank jeez and she was able to recount absolutely everything and at that point he took notice and was like okay that, that's some uh, <laughs> natasha romanoff sort of stuff yeah that, exactly it? yeah um <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so now so after all this he he was now a little bit more certain as to why he felt so uneasy when he took her call and why he wasn't keen to you know kind of accept her sort of invitation um, you know, to meet. Um, 
Now, Sarah Key then went into, you know, quite some detail about King Arthur's um, burial site um, and the fact that it was built on top of a uh, portal or gateway. Um, it was, it's, she believes that it was constructed as a defence to prevent monsters from another dimension entering our reality. Uh, Key threatened uh, Perks that he, if he continued his studies, he could expect another visit. Gotcha. Okay. Keepers of the gateway sort of thing. Yeah. Um, now, based on how the, the story unfolds, he he didn't take her advice and, and continued his uh, mm. his research. Um, so roughly two months later, so November 2000, um, Perks was driving down a winding, curvy sort of country road. Um, it was situated between uh, Bath and Glastonbury. Um, he approached a part of the road that was devoid of any traffic and illumination. Um, he was driving slow because of those conditions, so it was you know it was kind of hard to see. But also, if he needed to slam his brakes on, he knew he could do it you know safely. This was, of course, um, he he done that, so he, he slammed his brakes on, and this was because of a uh, horrific figure suddenly appearing in the middle of the road in front of him. Gotcha. Um, Dark humanoid figure had backlight wings and red eyes, um, and completely terrified, he throws the car back into, you know, sort of the accelerator, and with intention of r- running the monster down. Good man. So he was like, "Yeah, no, nah, sod this." And just, Rambo in it. Yeah, <laughs> going to drive through it. Um, however, the creature disappeared before he had a chance to to do that. So about a week after that, the gargoyle made another appearance. This time, Perks was woken in the middle of the night by a sensation of pure terror. He was paralysed in bed, unable to move, with its uh, with its um, monstrous hand gripping both of his wrists, essentially pinning him, you know, to his to his bed. It was uh, looming over him with its red eyes illuminating the room. That was the only sort of light source. Wow! Uh, a telepathic message entered um, Colin's mind, and it again. It again warned him to stay away from the gravesite of King Arthur and to stop digging in the woods. Immediately after the message was relayed, the gargoyle disappeared. Um, Perks determined that Sarah Key and the creature were one of the same. Mm. Colin didn't give up his research despite the warnings and died suddenly of a heart attack in 2009 around the border of the Stonehenge site. Wow. Which is coincidentally also linked to heavily, King Arthur. <laughs> heavily linked, yeah. Uh, so um, yeah, I remember I remember this story coming up before as well, actually. And yeah, I remember us also mentioning that he thought that this gargoyle was was her. Mm. Um, he, he didn't really give any particular reason for it. Only that it just came to him. Yeah, it came to him in you know in his room. It gave him the exact same warning, which I guess was a little too on the nose, you know, sort of mm. for his liking. Um, but even after that, he was still like, "No, nah, I'm gonna gonna carry on." It's an interesting one, though, isn't it? Because so, it's like if this gargoyle creature is evil, and King Arthur's grave is on the top of a a portal that allows to stop her coming through. How did she manage it? Yeah. Well, that and, <laughs> and maybe like, maybe what's down there is worse than her. Yeah, if she's always if she's a bigger the, bad. If she's the good egg, yeah, there's always a bigger bad. Isn't yeah, there? if she's the best of a bad bunch, yeah, what what else is? Uh, He's yeah. underneath it or down there or whatever, yeah. They're so the devil you know, eh? Exactly right. Yeah. So yeah, I thought uh yeah, I'd bring oh, that one that. You do b- love, back up again. You do love a bit of Arthur as well, don't you? I do, yeah. I'm a particular fan. So when I saw that I was like, oh, I'm gonna read it. <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah, they realised it was the same um yeah, it was the same encounter from the our uh, Wimbledon Black yeah, I, episode. I do remember that the description of the gargoyle came up as well. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, cool. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, That's so I right. thought it was quite um yeah, it's quite relevant to to this one again, just because of the you know the descriptions. But also, I thought it was quite cool that it was you know on our on our on shores the hunt for King Arthur and on the hunt for for King Arthur. Yeah. Sure. Oh, all right, excellent. Who, who, who you know technically is is a cryptid in his own right, potentially otherwise unidentifiable. Mm. So um, although yeah. either that or he could have been a giant, or that you know yeah that I think that I think it was a nine foot skeleton yeah. found in Glastonbury. There was, oh. yeah, there was. Maybe the plaque that that followed saying "This is King Arthur." Yeah, <laughs> might have been a bit of fiction that cropped up later, but a bit of a tourist trap that one. Oh, but uh, yeah, it's cool to uh, 
yeah, cool to think all the same. Yeah. It's cool. Excellent, yeah, man. man. Yeah, so um, I've got uh, a couple of, I've got three stories, actually, three encounters that come out of Chile in the early 2000s, like I mentioned before. Lovely. Um, the first one I will go on is um, three young men transporting uh, two tons of fish. Okay. From one place to another, obviously. Um, <laughs> the, the truck driver, an experienced truck driver, Mauricio Carrera. Um, a driver called Carrera. I know, right? <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Who would have thought it? <laughs> Who would have thought, yeah. <laughs> Almost like I made it up. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, he's an experienced truck driver and he's never seen anything weird. You right. know, he, he's heard about the stories because, you know, there's a lot of truck drivers, they do see weird stuff. They do see yeah. weird lights in the sky, strange things running across the road, ghosts and the such. Yeah, exactly. Um, but in his own experience, he's never seen anything like that. Right. Um, he had his uh, his mate along with him, Oscar, who's like his assistant, to mm. help him like hooking up and and all that sort yeah. of stuff. But um, also, he's picked up a hitchhiker by the name of Ricardo. Okay. And it seems like that's actually quite a a regular thing that would happen. Right. Chile okay. In so that's always the start of a bad story. I isn't know. It? It's, it's, <laughs> you pick up a hitchhiker they pick, and oh, a demon yeah. comes along. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, right about seven o'clock in the evening, and it's starting to get a bit dark. Um, and as they're driving along chatting you know having a good time and whatnot um the truck started leaning to the left a little bit right i thought that this is this is a bit weird and it, it became harder to steer almost like the um the wheel alignment was off like you like when you hit a, hit a particularly deep pothole and then all of a sudden yeah. your car is yeah it's wanting to your canvas sort of takes you yeah yeah exactly so the alignment yeah. is off it's like yeah. an uneven load almost right as well so um they, they get to like the next truck stop and they pull up and as they as they're slowing down to park up, the lights on the inside of the cab and, and the headlights start flickering, mm. like coming on and off, on and off, on and off. And they go, "What are you doing?" Like, not me. I'm yeah. not doing it. Um, Ricardo, can you just stick your head out? <laughs> go and have a look down the side just <laughs> like to make that. sure. <laughs> I love that because we're, we're not doing accents or <laughs> <laughs> translations. It's no, like, Wait, Ricky, stick your head out somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Ricardo, mate. <laughs> Yeah, come on, put your head out, <laughs> stick your head out the window and have a look for us. Fuck <laughs> you know. This is a direct translation verbatim. This yeah. is exactly how it went. Here, yeah, mate. Ricardo, Ricky, stick your head out somewhere. Your head out, mate. <laughs> What's going on? So so he actually jumps out of the out of the cab uh, to have a look at down the side lights and everything, just to make sure they're still on. Right. And <laughs> so then what happened was um Oscar s- sees Ricardo go completely still freezes in his in his step and he's gone completely white all the colors drained out of him and he he keeps muttering no 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 like this oh no 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 <laughs> no oh, 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 oh. <laughs> no man i don't i don't speak french either <laughs> um so oscar does they ask him what the hell's wrong with you What's wrong with you? So then they jump out, and as they go around to the side that Ricardo's on... <laughs> Who's driving at this point? <laughs> they're, they're parked. Oh, they're parked. They're parked. I missed that bit. <laughs> Keep up, will you? No, I completely missed the bit where they parked up. I'm thinking... Yeah, they're God, slowing down to park. The lights start flicking. What's he getting out of the cab for us? They're driving, <laughs> idiot. <laughs> no wonder he's saying no. He's, he's, saying, saying, oh, sh- sh- he's <laughs> hanging on the side of it like it's Fast and Furious. <laughs> yeah. Oh, don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we watched Nine. Yeah, yeah don't. I won't get onto that. <laughs> no. Well, that could be for the end. <laughs> we'll come Rocket back. Car. <laughs> That's all I've got. Fucking in space in a DeLorean <laughs> bullshit looking thing. Oh. Utter nonsense. <laughs> Utter I nonsense. love it. Absolutely oh, love it. Ridiculous. But yeah, so they jump anyway. out and they go around to to where Ricardo is, and they see this huge, ugly, hairy creature. It's completely black and it's got an oval shaped head. It's got fangs. Mm. Um, and it's got slanted, googling yellow eyes. And <laughs> I had to laugh. <laughs> Googly. Googly. You imagine <laughs> the big, like... <laughs> your shaky head ones. <laughs> your eyes, they, <laughs> they shake around all over the place. Yeah. I couldn't help but laugh when I saw that. <laughs> so yeah. I've just got this weird image in my head. That's immediately what I thought when you said Googly yellow eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so try and be scared of that. I mean, they clearly were. Yeah. Um and it was all it was doing is up. It was perched on on top of the cab, and all it was doing right. was staring at them. Now it had pointed 
um, pointed ears and it had whiskers that they said were similar to a boar or a wild wild pig or something like that. And it had okay. large bat-like wings protruding from its back. Um, like I said, it was perched on, on the left side of the cab. Mm. They screamed and, and shouted at it um, before jumping back into the cab and speeding away. Right. Um, and as they as they as they're speeding along, they feel this jolt on the cab itself, and then they realise that it's launched itself back up into the air and it flew away. They watched it fly right. away. Um, now, what was interesting about this was that their watches had stopped working all at okay. the same time. So they'd realised that uh, no, they mm. were digital watches. So their watches had stopped telling the time and when, when they came back on they were all out of sync as well so there's this weird electrical interference in in this particular case um yeah. which i found was odd there was physical evidence that was left behind right there was physical le- evidence that was left behind in, in the form of a clawed handprint left on the glass but there was also nice. scratches and indentation on the top of the cab where it was perched well. Right, okay. I mean, what I thought was weird that there was no further investigation on it. I mean, I suppose if you're that sort of way inclined, that sort of minded, you probably could take a swab mm. of the handprint because there would be oils and some and sort of trace, sweat yeah, sweat or something like that that would be on it. You might be able to DNA sequence or it even or pictures. Something. Did they, did you find any? Corresponding photographs or anything of no, I couldn't find any pictures no. of it, which is a shame, really, because yeah. I don't know. I don't know if they they would have thought in the like the year two thousand camera phones weren't really a thing then. So we we were relying on yeah, like true. digital cameras yeah, I suppose, and, and yeah. such, weren't we? In, in I suppose two thousands, yeah, yeah. It's we think it's not that far. Right. I don't think it's it was that, that far ago. back. Yeah, but they probably still had like the little windy disposable cameras, didn't yeah. they? And <laughs> when I think of the year 2000, I think it was like five years ago. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 22 years ago, 22, man. Jesus. That's horrifying. <laughs> it really is. It really, really is. Jesus. Right. Now, um, I found another another encounter in uh, July of 2004. And this um, relates to uh, a military officer by the name of uh, Carlos Debet okay. and his wife, Teresa, and they had uh, their kids in the car, and uh, I believe it was his nephew. Um, and uh, they were driving a rather large pickup, and this was nine nine o'clock in the evening. And the eldest daughter was acting a little bit strange. Um, she was being quiet, which was odd because mm. apparently she's quite a lively, lively sort of character. But she was being very quiet. But she and she kept saying, "There's something out there. There's something out there." It, right. With it being dark, there's it's chilly. There's not there's no mm. lamp light or anything like that. There's no street lights or anything like this. So right. all you've got is the headlights. And and they didn't pay attention to her because well, who the hell pays attention to their kids anyway? You know? <laughs> True. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just. Shut I'm up. sure it's nothing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Knock it off. Where we are. <laughs> yeah. Um. But then Teresa actually started getting a little bit nervous. Um. Because. You know, their daughter would continue. No, there's something out there. Mm. There's something. Look, look up. There's something up out there. Um, that's when the lights inside the cab, so inside the the truck, and the headlights start flickering. Yet again. And then they noticed that um, the daughter, in particular, noticed that her watch had stopped working right. at that point, and obviously the the clock on the dash. Had, I was stopped. just going to say, there might have been like radio interference if, if they'd had like a car stereo or something. Potentially. It didn't, say, white anything, noise or... didn't say anything about that. Okay. But that potentially could yeah. have been something that was happening as well. Um, and then as Teresa and Carlos both looked up, they could see these two large, dark, what they thought was birds flying overhead. Um, and then when they actually noticed the details, they noticed that the, the wings were very different, mm. being yep. bat-like. Yeah. Um there were humanoid bodies and they had short heads. So there was no beak like protrusion. Right, okay. Again, short, oval sized head. Yeah. Um and then they realised actually that the bodies they must have been around about two meters long. So these creatures were two meters tall. Oh dear. And the wingspans, they said they couldn't even but they were huge. Yeah. Huge wingspans. Um Carlos called them gargoyles. 
because yeah. that's what the the current um, the yeah. description would have been. One actually swept in front of the truck, in front of the pickup, um, causing them to just stop dead. It was like, right, I could, whoa, hang on, Some, that was a bit too close. We're going to stop. Yeah. But then they was like, right, now we're getting out of here. We got we got to go where we got to go. We got to get out of here. We can't be having this. So they Carlos put his foot down, and they were speeding over a hundred kilometers an hour, which is a little over sixty miles per hour. Okay. Um, and these creatures were keeping up calmly, like just kind of poodling along, sort of thing. Then to get to put that into like the creeper, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like the, yeah, like the creeper, the jeepers creepers, yeah, but. Um, yeah, that could be a Which, a if you gargoyle. think about it, that yeah. could be a gargoyle as well. Like oval it? shaped, like head, big eyes, uh, butt like wings. Yeah. About two, two meters tall. Yeah. 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 That could be. Yeah. Could be. Could be. Yeah. I mean, it, the influence for. There's an inter- interesting origins on that particular story and the director in particular. Oh, um, right. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you about it afterward. Oh, okay. Right. Okay. <laughs> it's not safe for work. Not co- oh, right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So to put that, to put those sort of speeds into perspective, guys, uh, the, the fastest bird on the planet is the peregrine falcon and it dives at a speed of 70 mile an hour. So it doesn't fly. It dives at a speed of 70 mile an hour. So that is incredibly quick, incredibly quick. But this is also it's very quick. This also is very similar to the accounts that we had with Mothman as well. Yep. In that Mothman was keeping up with these with these speeding vehicles yep. quite easily yeah. without majorly flapping the wings or anything no. like that. It's just kind of, it's taking Going its time. Going with the flow sort of thing, yeah. It's almost like it, it's not restricted by the laws of physics mm. sort of thing. It's, it's very, very strange. Um, yeah, very. And like I said before as well, Carlos is a military officer and so he was telling them, right, keep this quiet. Yeah, we, I don't want to be yeah. don't know, get caught martialed or something. Yeah, ridiculed. But a couple mm. of weeks later, another military officer who I ref- didn't want his name being put yep. forward um, said that he had encountered creatures matching the exact same description on the same stretch of road. Wow! Not only that, but there were a large amount of animal mutilations reported in the area at that time that match the same sort of description with the the small puncture wounds and and being exsanguinated as well. So completely drained of blood. That's interesting. Very, very strange. Mm. Um, The last last encounter that I've got here comes from um, Concepcion in uh, Chile. Right. And it was on the 3rd of May in the year 2000. And it involves uh, Liliana Romero, who is a college instructor, and she was woken by howls in her back garden around about 1 a.m. Um, she's usually a very good sleeper, um, so not much really wakes her up. Yeah. But she, a couple of couple of days before this, she had actually found some stray puppies, and she took them in, put them in the back garden, where she's got her own large mastiff, female la- mastiff. So right. the idea was that the, the mastiff was going to foster them. Right, so okay. That's something yep. that happens quite a lot. So yeah, yeah. Um, she was going to do that. Um, so she heard this this howling, this this screeching in the back garden. So she got up to investigate and she so she kind of creeped along and looked, like ducked down to look through her window. And she saw the puppies crying, the mastiff huddled under a shelter, frozen in fear. So this is a mastiff. Mastiffs yeah, are big they're dogs big. and yeah. they're built for battle mm. as well. And then that's when she saw a large, what she thought was a man, standing around two metres tall. The shoulder blades were, were split and it had large bat-like wings that were folded down its side. Right. She thought that, basically what she thought, she, as she was looking at it, completely shocked by what she saw. Yeah. She got this sense that it was enjoying it. Yeah. It was in, it's familiar, isn't uh, it? it? Yeah, exactly. Like like the one from NASA. Mm. It was enjoying and feeding off of the energy. So like it was draining everything around it. And she just got, she doesn't know why, but she got this sense. Now, this is another interesting thing. She went to try and wake up her husband. Now, her husband is a very light sleeper and he was not waking up. She was banging on the walls, banging the table, shaking him. He was not waking up. This is something that we hear about in a lot of um, alien abduction stories. 
or high strangeness that happens, um, mm. shadow people encounters where the sleep paralysis wears off. Yeah. And then you're trying to wake up your partner and they can't wake up. Yeah. It's like a weird sort of psychic mm. um, hypnotism going on here. It's, it's, it's very, very strange. And so after trying to wake up her husband, she went back and it being like a matter of seconds, so less than a minute, and the creature was gone. Yeah. So this weird two metre tall creature had just disappeared. And quite frankly, and quite rightly, she was like, I ain't going out there. Yeah. I'm going to wait till the morning. I'm going to wait till it's light <laughs> at yeah. the very least. Yeah, exactly. And then yeah. I'm going to go out there. And she went out there and unfortunately all the puppies had perished. and all Including them, the Mastiff? No, the Mastiff survived. Right. Um, however, they all had puncture wounds. The Mastiff had one. Wow, okay. Mm. And maybe it was able to fight it off, maybe. Potentially. Potentially. But the puppies all had two puncture mark mm. puncture marks yeah. um in and around the, the the neck area. Yeah. And so did the Mastiff, but the Mastiff only had one. So she took the Mastiff to the vet and the vet couldn't determine exactly what it was that done it. Wow. We basically said, Oh, maybe he got it caught on a fence. Mm. Or something like this, like a wire yeah, yeah. fence. You know, but if that was the case, you'd do a swab, you'd see if there's any metal or anything like yeah, that, yeah. like rust, that, but nothing. Or it would have a defining look about it where you could say, oh, yeah, that's a puncture wound from Well, if it's a puncture wound, it's going straight it, in. Yeah. If, you're, if you're getting it caught it's on perfect. something, it's going to go in and then tear away. Tear or, yeah, exactly, yeah. There's no tear, it's just a puncture wound. Yeah. Wow, okay. Yeah. It's interesting. Very interesting, I oh. found those ones. Okay. But, yeah, that, I, mean, I, would like to, I would like to have seen, in those ones in particular... Someone go out there with a Geiger counter. Yeah, I think that'd be. Maybe very that's something needs to happen more. Maybe when, and hopefully people sort of know about it. And these things gain a bit of traction that that people start to learn that that's what. I mean, not everyone's going to have one of those mm. counters, I suppose. But you know, well, we was talking about this when we did the uh, the Helia saga. <laughs> yeah, um, way back when. <laughs> way back when, and we made the point that paranormal investigators don't talk to cryptozoologists. Cryptozoologists don't talk to ufologists. Mm. You know, they don't. None of them talk to one another. They really. don't want to yeah. talk to each other. Like these, the people they need to come together because there is something yeah. weird happening that involves all of them. And the, yeah, they don't want they to. They could it. all use their expertise. Yeah, yeah, definitely. They need to form a committee. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, I think it's no. I mean, you know, I make your eyes. Definitely would be. Um, you know, would be worth it. Um, so. Just going to go into some local knowledge that we um, that we touched on um, sort of at the at the beginning. Um, now, our um, listener who still wishes to remain anonymous, um, kind of. Oh, you mean local local, local Puerto Rico? You mean? Local to Puerto oh, Rico. Okay, gotcha. Um, kind of off their own back, really, which which is amazing. Um, looked through a lot of local. Lot sort of news articles, um, news reports on on YouTube and and whatnot, and mm. basically translated them for us, oh, wow. and sent us a a field report, <laughs> basically Brilliant. of sort of sightings and and what the sort of the local belief is on yeah. uh, in in uh, Puerto Rico well, about the the well, gargoyle. That's, well, that's great because I don't speak French, so, so no, exactly right. <laughs> I can't read it either. <laughs> Neither do I. <laughs> so yeah, so it's uh, no. So firstly, thank you to. Uh, the listener for just the effort of yeah. I mean, because there, there's you know corresponding you can take a look after but there's corresponding like pictures and you know references and and all sorts oh, and well, um yeah I'll, I'll see if we can maybe um actually share the report maybe like on the socials yeah it for other people to kind of look at because it's, it's it's really good stuff and, well, yeah, and we'll and put the, it into pdf and we'll we'll get it on there and that yeah the, because the pictures um do help. So if worst comes to the worst, we can just sort of share those with maybe a reference to kind of what I'm about to sort of talk about. Mm. Um, but on Puerto Rico, the gargoyle is is a legend. Uh, that's certainly what the skeptics call it. Um, but people have reported to the police and to newspapers um, to seeing a large five to seven foot red eyed flying monster that smells like sulfur or has a, po a putrid smell. Oh, which does harken back to the Chupacabra as well, it can't, as well as 
all of these all cryptids. The, yeah, didn't all it? of them. Yeah, um, it's been uh, reported in in many cities and towns in in Puerto Rico. Uh, at least uh, seven. Um, now, aside from the Puerto Rican gargoyle, it is also known as the Basunaleta gargoyle. And I've probably just butchered that. <laughs> and the the Guanica gargoyle. Guanica. Guanica gargoyle. Yeah. yeah. And I don't know, the, 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 the like gargoyle de Basalaneta. <laughs> <laughs> I have practiced. Would you believe? Yeah. Just uh, yeah. I just go, not great with go, pronunciations. Give us, give us a Puerto Rico. Puerto, Puerto Rico. Yes. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I'm a happy man. Yeah. yeah. Um, Easily now, pleased. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> now, much like. Um, us by by the sounds of it, you know, our listener also um believes that uh yeah, the you know, Chupacabra, you know, gargoyle mothman um are one of the same. Mm. And the local reports um you know certainly help uh certainly help support that. <clears throat> um they start in two thousand and ten, so again around the same sort of time period that you mm. found yourself over in uh, in Chile. Um, the first reported sightings um, were in June of 2010 um, when police agents approached ufologist Ronaldo Rios um, and told him that the police had received various reports in the area of, um, of Guanica, Puerto Rico. Um, and it's basically just a dry sort of a dry forest oh, okay. um area almost like a mangrove sort of thing yeah, yeah. But, but certainly yeah by the looks of it it's a coastal town um southwest of the island um protected by a, you know these sort of dry forests um and it was actually declared a reserve by the united states in 1981 okay um so believed to be of some sort of uh, agricultural mm. importance um Rios says the creature had been seen years prior, but because it was uncommon, um, it hadn't really been reported until the sightings sort of gained prominence in, in 2010, which again is similar to a lot of these cryptids that we look at. It takes that kind of one person to actually come forward before everyone else goes, oh, you know, actually, no, I've, I've seen that as well. And so it's very much the same with uh you know with this one yeah because that in itself is a weird phenomenon because i get that uh, again going back to hellia that was something that they found the team that mm. people were like oh no nothing strange really happens here although there was this one time i did see this ufo over my house and they're like what really that, that's yeah that's what we want to like, know yeah tell us <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah like tell us about that's what we're structure. here for yeah and <laughs> maybe these people that in these like local, mm. localized areas these little communities and whatnot little towns and whatnot yeah it's not strange it's not, it's not if it's an everyday occurrence or so, certainly often enough and they're like, oh yeah, you know, there's another one. They probably just brush it off as, mm. you know, not being anything. But then, you know, if, you know, they do see UFOs and then they see, you know, one of these creatures, many people, you know, because we only learned recently really from, from doing this that, you know, that they're linked. Mm. You know, UFO sightings and cryptid sightings normally happen around the same sort of time and yeah. that they are, you know, sort of linked. So maybe people don't think to make that, you know, connection. They're not talking to each other. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so the, the reports um, spoke about a very large bird um, which residents would hear come out at night. It would land with a heavy thump on their roofs um, and when they came out of their homes, they saw the creature perched on their roof. Um, now, the, the one the one thing they all kind of noted in, in kind of general strangeness is that there aren't any known birds on the island that exist at that size that they were describing. Mm. Um, that's pretty big which again is like five to seven feet yeah. <laughs> there aren't many I don't think there's any birds that maybe a, I mean, that's not the wingspan that's like standing that's the yeah the standing yeah. height of the, the creature yeah um, it was assumed that it was hiding near or in the long closed uh, abandoned sugarcane plant um, located like on the TNT, the TNT plant with Mothman yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah the reports always mentioned a uh, sulfur um, or putrid stench, the large wingspan, bat-like, uh, the red eyes, and again, it's um, its general size, which is sort of five to seven feet. Um, Rios and other residents went on an expedition near the old sugar plant, and the ufologist claims to have seen the creature himself. 
and this is very um, reminiscent of the uh, Puerto Rican uh, president who, with the Chupacabra, mm. put his own sort of yeah, band of investigators together and went out, you know, sort of hunting. Um, they were near a heavily treed area and they felt a strong wind just come out of nowhere. They came closer with their sort of flashlights and they all witnessed a large uh, feathered or hairy type bird with open wings um, that eluded them as soon as they came sort of too close and it flew away in the opposite sort of direction. Mm. Um, on December 1st, 2010, the Gagola made its first newspaper um, appearance when the uh, local newspaper reported of sightings in Guanaca. Um, couldn't actually find the article, um, you know, itself. Mm. Um, but uh, yeah, it was just full of eyewitness, eyewitness accounts and similarities in, in all of them are the description of the creature and, you know, and, and kind of what they uh, saw. Um, but yeah, again, around that sort of time that it started gaining that prominence, it was given, you know, kind of its name, the, the you know, the descriptions were, you know, kind of all pointed out and linked to one another. Mm. The police picked up on it. And then as soon as this guy sort of seemingly got involved, it then started appearing in the, the sort of the newspapers and getting that kind of notoriety that a lot of these, uh, a lot of these seem to get. Um, yes, yeah, so that was the first one on December 1st in 2010. And then December 20th, the same year, uh, it, it came out again um, when the creature was actually um, linked to uh, the gargoyle um, and then linked to any tragedies that happened on the island, which then came its comparison with uh, Mothman. Gotcha. Um, the tragedies that I think they they sort of relate to uh, things like um, earthquakes and tremors uh, and that kind of thing. Um, and then this gargoyle, Mothman-like creature would then appear sort of on the uh, on the island. Again, very much along like the same lines as there being a disaster in this thing. Exactly, appearing. yeah. Instead of a bridge collapsing, like the Silver Bridge or anything, it was, yeah, an earthquake. So a natural disaster, mm -mm. I guess, yeah, in, in, in this case. Mad. Um, three days later, uh, it was seen again um, by a lady, uh, Felicita Citron, in the town of Guayama. Um, she was doing house chores and saw it through her window. She described it as, um, again, about five feet in height, dark figure with wings. Um, but she said it carried the silhouette of a, of a person. So the wings were tucked sort of behind behind its back, basically. Yeah. Like what you were saying in, uh, earlier. Yeah, the one with the puppies, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um, she says that uh, she got a strange feeling from the, the creature and was more sort of baffled or confused than, than afraid. Um, and she felt that the creature itself um, was either afraid or hurt and needed her help. That's a different Which one. is a different one. That's I've very not, different. Normally it's a, f a feeling of fear and, mm. you know, sort of terror. Whereas this was, this, I guess, the same feeling, but that's what the creature was feeling as opposed to imparting that on the the, the witness. There seems to be, or maybe, what, I, what I'll take from that is that these creatures have a um, this outward field that they can't necessarily control yeah. of psychic energy as well. Mm-hmm. So maybe she's not a particularly like, sensitive. She wouldn't be like a, you'd consider like a, a psychic or anything like that, or yeah. anyone that's particularly sensitive. But you could certainly get that impression off of something. That yeah, exactly. Would have a strong enough, um, a strong enough intention. Yeah, sort of. I guess. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Absolutely. Cool. Yeah. But so that was, I like that bit in particular because that that was different. Asking for help. Yeah, like kind of giving that impression that it needed some sort of like help. Yeah. Um, now the next day, blood, blood. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so the next day, which was Christmas Eve uh, of 2010, um, there was an earthquake in in Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. uh, in the article, the reporter not only compares the sightings of the gargoyle to the sighting of Point Pleasant, West Virginia, um, but also sightings of a gargoyle-like creature before different catastrophes would happen, naming uh, Chernobyl. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, the famed. Nuclear plant disaster. Third man of uh, Chernobyl. Third man of Chernobyl. Um, Chicago and China. Yes. All of which I think we covered in our Mothman episode. That's right, we did. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah. So, yeah, again. Um, and then these are local, you know, kind of reporters, all, all, you know, all the way over in 
sort of Puerto Rico making these same, you know, distinctions like twelve years ago. Mm. Sort of thing. So yeah, there's definitely something to something it. Something that yeah. Uh so we, we jump ahead two years. So we know in, in July of twenty twelve. Um, and more sightings are, are coming out in, in sort of local news. Um, now, most – so that there was a story that was that was printed, and, and as you would expect, most, um, you know, reactions to the report, Pope f- fun of it, you know, ridiculed, mm-hmm. you know, ridiculed the subject or, you know, the sort of the witness. Um, and even to an extent, the, the report itself and the way it was written actually mocked the people who experienced these – um, you know, encounters. Mm. Um, but in August of that year, um, a lady by the name of Nareda Garcia um, saw in plain daylight um, and said uh, that her encounter with it was violent. Um, wow. It, it pushed her fence down um, and she understood how many people didn't believe it because of the sheer size and weight it would have needed to actually just push a fence down out of the, the ground. Like a wire um, fence sort of thing or... Uh, I have, it's not actually, the, the actual fence isn't mentioned, but I have imagined it was going to be, yeah, like a, a f- sort of four to six foot kind of cage, like wire fence yeah, that would go yeah. around the outside of the properties that you see in metal frame set to the States and stuff. I know this isn't America, but that, that kind of metal yeah. framed. Yeah. Cause yeah. We, we tend to have like wooden posts and, yeah. and that sort of thing, really yeah. like a slats as our fences. Yeah. So that's, that's what I um, pictured wrongly or, or rightly. Um, she described it having large claws, small horns, sharp teeth, and a large wingspan. Um, she said that she'd even feel the uh, felt the blows of air on her face and body from its wings as it flew away. Um, she took a photo, which, uh, as you would expect, came out blurry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, nice. But said that the encounter was, um, you know, horrific. Her main concern at the time was that she feared that it would hurt her mother and sister. Um, but it's not actually clear whether either of them actually saw it or whether it was just the you know the the, the daughter. Yeah. Um, if they did see it, then they weren't seemingly weren't questioned as as part of the um, report. But I guess for your benefit, that's a, a screenshot of the um, of the picture, the photo. So a, fo- a photo of a photo. It's a photo of a photo. Yeah. Yeah. That. So you can see looks like something it's, with its wings. It's out definitely stretched. blurry, but you can see the humanoid sort of shape with the. The large sort of yeah. wingspan, um, so uh, yeah, which I thought was quite um, thought was quite cool, um, and yeah, they they just they keep rolling in really. So again, the, the same year, a security guard this time um, came forward anonymously under the guise of Jose Luis, um, claimed that he knows, um, you know that that he you know sort of saw a gargoyle, um, and again described it as dark uh, very large humanoid silhouette with wings um you know up in up in the sky who knows people don't believe him and that's why he wanted to be anonymous mm. um but the and again this links into the canine um uh descriptions oh i see that's an artist's rendering um of uh of the guanica gargoyle so yeah. what these people have seen so again you've got the sort of the canine kind of looks like um, kind of looks like a wyvern sort of thing yeah yeah with a with a small small tail yeah um canine like almost like yeah. um uh, an english bull terrier sort yeah. of sort of profile with that long sort of snout protruding yeah. snout yeah but then you've got the bat like sort of wings and yeah, yeah the dog like tail and yeah so i thought that was quite um yeah, yeah so i thought that was quite uh quite interesting um now, one, one guy actually came forward and, and like, sort of publicly. Um, his name is Eric Ramirez. Um, and you'll like this bit because he said that he would see uh, UFOs at the same time that other people would report seeing the gargoyle. Ah. And, um, yeah, he had a lot of, um, yeah, a lot of photos um, to, to prove it. Um, Do you think it's another one of those things of it depends on who's looking? Depends on who's looking because, yeah, and that, that ties in nicely actually because his own belief is that, and I think you'll like this, his own belief is that it's an experiment but not by us. He believes it's an alien experiment from DNA taken from beings of Earth. Um, aside from the gargoyle, uh, the chupacabras um, that were seen again at around the same time, he believes that they might 
they too might be linked. So he's another one that, that firmly believes in it. Mm. Um, Ronaldo Rios, who we mentioned earlier, the, the ufologist, um, he's been tracking the gargoyle since it was you know first reported um, when the, the police first approached him about it. Um, and it's one of those things where he, he sort of said that many people know about it. A lot of people have seen it, but they're all too afraid to come mm. forward is you know pretty standard in these types of things i mean even even our listeners uh <laughs> remained anonymous yeah so it just goes to show that people don't want the you know the kind of the the heat or the they don't you want know the stigma. ridicule that might come from you know believing in um you know in these uh in these types of things and correct me if i'm wrong but puerto rico is not a large island no it's i don't think really no not. it's quite a small island and there's all of these sightings yeah, well, there's a in there's a, a picture actually that, I, that I'll show you. It's a it's a map of the island, mm. and it, it shows you um, sort of where the various different gargoyles uh, have been uh, sighted. Yeah, and it will give you an idea on the the general area of the the island. It's, yeah, in the scheme of things, it's not massive. Yeah, no, it's not, is it? It's not like yeah. it's not like the British Isles or anything like that. It's, no. it's much much smaller. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, now, this uh, ufologist also said that a lot of police agents uh, and authority figures are, are also involved in a lot of these reports and providing with, you know, good information, but they all ask to stay anonymous. So yeah. it's hard to kind of give it any credibility when you can't give people's sort of names to it. it just Yeah, because if, you, if you're you like, oh, I've heard this story, but oh, I can't tell you you told me those. Like, oh, yeah, all right. Yeah. yeah okay, here it, we go. Yeah. It's like, so I can get the scepticism. Yeah, to a you, point. If you can't comp- like if you can't put a name on it, mm. it's just as good as anecdotal. Well, evidence, yeah, isn't it, yeah, really? exactly. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, so that's yeah. I think that's quite um, yeah, quite interesting. Um, in September of that year, so 2012, again, the more more people were seeing the the creature flying around, um, but more people were starting to come out and claim to have had encounters, um, you know, with it. Um, uh, and again, there's another rendition um, of the Barcelonetta um, gargoyle. Yeah, it, um, um, another for, artist's impression. For our listeners, it's um, she's got more an oval-shaped head. Oval-shaped head, yeah, um, but not in the. It's kind of like an, a vertical oval-shaped yeah. head, large pointed ears, red eyes. Um, it looks a bit like Nosferatu. Quite, yeah, quite. I was going to say quite um, vampiric mm. in uh, in its uh, in its appearance, which uh, which again would link more to the I guess Chupacabra than. Uh, yeah. I guess than what we've read on gargoyle, especially and with the you know the fangs protruding and if anyone's the ears seen uh, the underworld films, it looks like um, Bill Nye's uh, character, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. There's another <laughs> one of that becomes a hybrid. Yeah, uh, Marcus, I think it is. It's kind of oh it yeah, like okay, that. yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah, like with the big wings and all that. That's it. Yeah, yeah. It kind of looks like that. Yeah, it does. No, you're right. Uh, and again, all these people that have seen the same sort of goggle again describe it as you know the same. There's about five different accounts in particular around that time in in 2012, mm. and they all describe it as red-eyed, strong, long claws, muscular legs, large wingspan. Um, some saying at least a four-foot wingspan each side. Oh wow! So yeah. we're talking like nine, ten feet. Yeah. It, when you include the body. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, it has heavy, um, heavy footsteps. Um, and when you see it, it's normally followed by a, a loud sort of screeching uh, noise, mm. which again is quite similar to yeah other other cryptids. Um, <laughs> again, again, just for uh, um, originality, another policeman uh, who wanted to um, remain remain anonymous also called Jose. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of Jose. Uh, there's a lot, yeah. Um, <laughs> came um came forward to say that he and and other policemen teachers senior citizens um had all um made these accounts and reported it to the authorities uh, he knew that they were credible witnesses and he felt more and more like people were coming forward um because they're now starting to understand what it is they're seeing and, and what's kind of going on mm. but it's the it's the kind of shared ridicule from probably a small minority in the a very sort of loud the community, minority. yeah. Uh, that mm. people are still like, no, I'd rather not. So, and especially you think they're, you know, they're teachers, they're, you know, authority figures, they're policemen. They don't want to lose their their jobs for believing in something that yeah. people might think is widely, you know, a bit of a bit of a kook. Yeah, well, so, you know what I feel about the uh, very yep, loud minority. Do I do? <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe it's time we start shutting yeah. them down. I, I, exactly right. Yeah. Um, 
Now, a, a witness, and a name hasn't been given uh, at all on this, um, found that her baby horse um, had two separate fang markings. Um, so it wasn't like four holes like a dog bite, but two holes on each side of its body. So it's like done sort of oh. that on its, on, on its body. She said that they were deep and her finger could fit inside it. Um, I bet they also like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <Thanks. laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, unlike, you know, when a, a dog or a larger animal was, you know, used to sort of bite its its prey. Because, um, you know, the, the tooth markings are, are shallow. Um, but with dogs and stuff, they tend to rip at this. Like we were saying, you know, they tend to tear and rip at the skin. Mm. These were a struggle. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, these were perfect circular puncture wounds that just went straight in. With no sign of struggle. With, yeah. No sign of struggle. No tearing. Like Very nothing. Weird. Yeah. Um, for Scott's benefit, and again, we'll share it on the, uh, the socials. But um, oh, yeah. yeah, so you've got the oh, two. Wow, yeah, you've got the two there, and then so that's on like a fowl, isn't it? Yes, so that's on yeah, so or a calf, like, which whichever say a baby it's cow is. Probably about the same width as my palm, so probably something like mm. uh, fifty or sixty millimeters apart, mm. something like that. That sort yeah. of yeah. size. So there you go. So let's you can see the two oh, wow, yeah. on that side, and then on the corresponding side. And see, um, it'll be, this is what I was saying um, earlier about the, the Guanica and the Bar- Barcelonetta, completely different sides of um, of the island, but it's not that so see big. Where you're from, mate? Oh, what Ponce? Yeah. yeah, thanks for that. <laughs> I did see that. <laughs> thanks for that. <laughs> Bastard. Ponce, isn't it? Ponce, isn't it? <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm sure that's not the local dialect, but uh, really I won't. Isn't. I won't butcher it anymore. Um, Do you reckon Ricky came from Ponce as well? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no doubt. Yeah, yeah. Ricky from Ricky. Uh, Ricky from Ponce. Ricky from Ponce. Um, but there, but there were some uh, sightings um, from Barcelonetta uh, in 2018, um, which, is, as you've just seen from that map, is uh, again mm. another coastal town, but this time it's north of the island, um, and yeah, completely opposite to. Um, Guanica, which is uh, which is on the south, um, much like the chupacabra, lo- large amounts of uh, chickens are uh, attacked and, and found dead. Um, they found one sort of perforation on the chickens, though, which was interesting, not two, um, mm. which does bring some doubt as to whether it is you know sort of a cryptid or or just something else, because there's just the one puncture wound on each side as opposed to um, opposed to the two. Mm. So that's what kind of yeah. Not on the chickens, you say? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, and again, just from a couple of um, sort of news uh, news clips, there neighbours in, in the n- northern town of Barceloneta in Puerto Rico are search- searching for a five-foot-tall gargola that, according to reports, has killed several chickens and roosters in the area for the past month and a half. The complaints and first-person accounts have led to a search that started over the, the weekend... Um, and has now involved the Puerto Rican police. So they're taking it serious yeah. to to an extent. Um, Raise right, a bit. Of <laughs> put the teeth in for this one. Here we go. <laughs> Resident Edgardo Santiago Rodriguez described the gargoyle as a bodybuilder in animal form. Very good. Others have said the gargola is a red-eyed demon-like creature with four-foot-long wings. Uh, Santiago uh, told Primera Hora he was in his pool when he saw the gargola. The attack seems to be the same kind of for every victim in the area. Bite on the neck from where the creature sucks blood and leaves the animals hypnotised. So, um, very strange. Which again, yeah, he's very chupacabra esque. Yeah, um, and very he, vampire-esque. The vampire-esque. Whole thing is vampire esque. Vampire esque. Yeah, isn't it? it's yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, you know, it is. Um, now I think I'm sure I've seen these pictures before, um, but uh, a lady in Barcelona um, who lives up in the hills um, was out in her backyard and mm. saw what she believes to be the Barcelona gargoyle flying over her backyard. Yes, yes we saw. No, I'm sure I've seen these before. Mothman. We, yeah. we we got these out for Mothman, yeah. didn't we? I mean, that's pretty. Yeah, I've seen compelling, these. isn't it? I mean, it's it looks like a, a long humanoid figure with. You know, sort of quite yeah, a great wingspan. I remember the explanation. 
Mm. They said that it was an owl, a great owl, a large owl. Yeah. Um, that had caught a snake. Is that the one? That's the I one. knew I'd seen it. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah the one, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so, the, so for our listeners, it's uh, the silhouette of what looks like a winged creature with um, mm. long legs, um, sort of trailing behind it. Yeah. So what various different experts have tried to debunk it have, have said. Yeah. That it's a large owl that has um, captured a snake, and that yeah. the, the the trailing legs are the snake. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so again, much like the um, chupacabra, many you know animals um, have been found dead in uh, Barcelona. Horses, chickens, goats, uh, and the like. Um, our listener has sent us um, multiple photos of um, their chickens, basically. <laughs> um, but there were more than 50 um, that were reported to have been killed by way of their blood being drained. Mm. Um uh, and I went and uh, put my teeth in. Put your teeth in, babe. And eyewitness <laughs> <laughs> thinks that there is more than one of these particular creatures because the the sightings are becoming more and more common for it to be the work of just one creature. Yeah. Um. And and now you know multiple like dozens of people have have seen it. Um. And the our, our listener wanted to sort of mention uh, or bring to our attention that it's important to mention that there are caves in the mountain range region of that area. So could be a potential origin of where they're coming from, where they're you know disappearing to. Yeah, yeah. Um, basically, well, we've got our theories about cave I've got, systems yeah, and, and got stuff our own like theories this, on we? that. Yeah, um, and then yeah, it, within the report, um, yeah, she's just provided us with a couple of pictures of like witness uh, drawings of what they saw, uh, a couple of screenshots from uh, found footage. Of people inspecting their land, you know, the chickens are, you know, being drained. Um, a four to five inch claw was um, was left in the uh, in the mud. Oh wow! On uh, on someone's land, which okay, uh, so could otherwise at, not be uh, identified. We're looking at um, on this guys. We're looking at a four um, toed print that mm. measuring around about yeah. four inches in length. Or to, yeah, about four and a half inches in, in length, yeah. The, 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 the toes are quite thin, mm. um, so it's not any, it's definitely not a canine print. I mean, I'm no expert, but I can tell no. that it's not a canine print. Um, if it's a or, bird, it's a... It's, it's a certainly not a big, big old bird. Certainly <laughs> yeah. not a big cat either. No. Um, because no. there are no pads on it. No. But you there's, there's at least three definite claw marks mm. there as well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, Ooh. so that's... Um, yeah, that's... Uh, Certainly interesting. Um, so, yeah, so this, this uh, Ronaldo Rios, basically he says that the, the ridicule um, and the, the name chosen has, has been part of the reason for a lot of these photos being, you know, called fake and, yeah, like the continued, you know, ridicule from from certain people. Um, he said it all... Professional sceptics like yeah, Michael Shermer. Yeah, basically, yeah. Yeah, he said it took a lot away from the real work and, and research that was being done on these uh, sightings, um, especially because uh, there are now reports of something very similar in Mexico and uh, Chile, yep. as you rightly went over not too long ago, which now sort of is, is helping bring a bit of credibility to the reports that were in, uh, in Puerto Rico. Mm. Um, now, just to, um, just to end, actually... Um, in 2019, um, more than 2,000 tremors and earthquakes shook the island of Puerto Rico, leaving, you know, sort of complete chaos and many people without homes. Um, experts say that although Puerto Rico is inside a seismic zone where two tectonic plates shift and push against each other, the quantity is very unusual. Oh, so okay. the fact that that many uh, is happening, I'm assuming it, despite it the fact the... of where they are, is... Yeah, I'm assuming it'd be the North American plate and the North Atlantic plate yeah. that are yeah. on that sort of fault line. And mm. Yeah, so the seismic activity is it, you would expect yeah. it on those on those yes, lines. Yes, you'd expect something, but not to the quantity that they had in one year. Two thousand separate occurrences. That's a lot of, in one year. Yeah, yeah. Um, however, Ronaldo Rios uh, swears that these devastating natural phenomena are linked to the gargoyle because he believes it is much like the Mothman. So whenever you see him, a tragedy that's happens. Like several a day. That's yeah, like, and more and more of these things are 
you know, kind of happening and being seen and being reported. So it's, and you know, again, we don't like coincidences and this seems a little mm. too coincidental if you're, you know, led to, you know, kind of, you know, believe what's, um, you know, what's happening. Um, so yeah, it's, um, yeah, wow. it's an interesting one. Yeah. Um, some local theories, uh, believe that it's a bat. Um, there are 13 species of bats in Puerto Rico, but none are of a giant species. Uh, I think the vampire bat or the f- uh, there's a fruit bat, which is fruit bat. Fruit bat is also known as the flying fox. So there are fruit bats, yeah. um, which can grow pretty sort of large, size. but they don't attack other animals. Obviously, only eat fruits and insects. So they also don't drink blood, um, and I think more importantly, they don't get to that size either. I mean, they're big, mm. but they don't get to five foot in height. They do have a canine-like head. They do, hence why they're called yeah. flying foxes. Yeah, yeah. But again, they're but against they're, the size for me that they're elusive and they only eat fruit yeah. and and bugs. So, mm. Mm. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, other theories um, believe that it's actually the chupacabra of the 90s, which is now known as the gargoyle, and that it's somehow kind of uh, evolved with the, you know, kind of like the wings. Um, animal ritual um, sacrifice cover ups, which yeah. I know you covered in the chupacabra episode, yep. uh, which I also found stuff on. Um, the one that I quite like um, is that it's a genetically engineered animal that lives in the cave systems um, and does not need to eat that frequently, uh, which is why they're only seen at certain times, you know, sort of through the years because they just come out when they need to to, like, to hunt. Sounds like they're, they're, they're needing it a lot more but, frequently now. Yeah, they're getting hungry. <laughs> yeah. If there's like a, maybe like a multiplying population. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So that's one. Th- and the last theory is that it's a prehistoric bird. Uh, which I did actually read somewhere else as well, a, a Tetrasaurus or something, but basically a pterodactyl, but mm-hmm. it had a different, it had a different name, Petrosaurus or Pterosaurus or something. Um, but yeah, basically they they believe that it's a prehistoric bird, an animal species unknown to us and yet undiscovered. Um, but many people think that that's um, impossible um, for it to be an unknown breed of an animal. Um, well, oddly enough, there's some really weird, sorry, there's, there's some really weird stories coming out of the the wild, wild west. Yeah, um, <laughs> of people seeing flying reptiles, and yeah, I know. Yeah, was, and I've uh, read, I've read that a lot. Of that came up actually. I can't remember the um, the 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 name of the author, but there is a, a book out there by the name. It's like dinosaurs and cowboys, or cowboys and dinosaurs. Yeah, or something like that. And it's, it's I love that. Is Sounds like a shit film that, w- that needs to be like made. Cowboys versus aliens. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah but with dinosaurs. But with dinosaurs. <laughs> oh, yeah, someone's got. It's going to be on Amazon. Yeah, I'm going to find it. It will be there. Yeah, I'm gonna we need to be. It. We need to. I wish I was well good at podcasting, but filmmaking <laughs> as well would be great because we could make some really good shit films. I oh, know, right? <laughs> but yeah, the, in, yeah. In, in, there have been some real accounts and even yes, people have, shooting yeah. down. And apparently, there's a picture out there. Yeah. Of these guys posing with yeah. something that they killed. That is a. It's a pterodon. Yeah, basically, yeah. There was one from like the eighteen hundreds, wasn't there? I mean, is that the one you're talking, one talking about? about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I've seen that one. Um, so, yeah, so many people f- on on the island think that it's impossible for there to be an unknown breed of animal. Um, but our, our listener sort of puts that it wasn't. You know, before the nineteen hundreds, gorillas were thought to be mystical mm. until it was actually proven That's that right. they existed. So, it, it you know, it, it can happen. Um, so, yeah. So they're yeah. So they're um sort of compelling theories um i like the genetically modified cave dwelling uh one the real world sort, sort of, of the most out yeah. of um out of those four in particular but um but yeah so that's the, that's the little uh sort of field report provided to us by um our listener so some local our puerto report, rican our uh, reporter in the field our correspondent in the field yeah <laughs> Put yeah. that uh, put that together and yeah i mean like, like you saw it came with photos and, and references and everything so um very in-depth thank you very was, much yeah that was perfect so yeah thank you again to listener for providing that um yeah it's good it, it adds credibility to what we were going over adds a different you know sort of dynamic it also reiterated a lot of what you said from you know the sort of the chilly you know sightings and, mm. and whatnot so um yeah no that was um fantastic so yeah thank you for uh yeah putting that together it was oh. uh, it was good. Yeah, it'd be really good. I mean, um, I suppose we usually reserve this part for getting off the fence, but I think we've kind of done it. As I think we've we have along again. Kind of done it as we've gone along. It's just one of those that you can't help but sort of give your, um, you know, opinion to it. Mm. Um, 
you know, at the end, you kind of find yourself doing it as, as you're going through. So I guess um, in conclusion, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, <laughs> um, in, yeah, in conclusion, I guess, um, yeah, ag again, you ca I can't go through and in feeling that there's a certain element of truth to, you know, these cryptids um, and then sit here and, you know, discount this one. You know, there's far too many witnesses, far too many accounts, reports, mm. photographs, this one's quite heavy in, in evidence yeah. um, and, and witness statements and news articles and, you know, police are involved and all these other kind of high-end officials. So it gets to a point where you have to sort of think, right, something is going on. Whether yeah. you want to believe that it's a gargoyle or, a, you know, a flying cryptid, it's neither here nor there. There is mm. something going on where, you know, a creature, a being is being seen inflicting these, you know, feelings of you know doom on people that yeah. you know witness it by a way of wanting to drain you know their energy um you know as as you know that theory from puerto rico goes you know they they come out every now and again only to feed so yeah. is that why so many chickens and cattle and, and goats are all sort of found dead at, at one point flaps because yeah, yeah no pun intended i'm sure <laughs> <laughs> not, this, not this time no <laughs> so they um yeah so they, they they assuming they you know they are cave dwelling you know they they come out every every so often mm. do a, a mass you know a, a mass feed. a mass uh, shop <laughs> yeah, yeah. A bulk shop and uh you know obliterate a load of farm animals and then disappear again for a year or it's very a couple um, of months it's very horror movie-esque isn't it in, in that in that sort in of in that respect yeah because yeah. again you like the creeper and the creeper yeah yeah every 10 year one like it you know every yeah. 25 years every 10 years there's always these kind of yearly cycles. patterns or cycles that's right mm. of, of when these things you know oh, yeah. sort of come out everything's so. cyclical yeah everything yeah like all of this stuff that we're finding all, all, all of these bits of evidence i mean i'm, I'm amazed by how much evidence there is in puerto rico and yeah yet we knew so little about it until we started looking exactly until it. we were pointed in that direction until we started looking and yeah it's um i mean stellar work mad. by by our listener stellar oh, work yeah fantastic it's i mean it's stuff that we never would have found because we were <laughs> we wouldn't have been able to read the bloody stuff so <laughs> yeah. the fact that they've not only found it but then gone to the trouble of you know translating it for us is um yeah it's beyond amazing yeah. so it's it's brought stuff to us that yeah we wouldn't necessarily have found through our own lack means. of <laughs> yeah yeah exactly <laughs> yeah. our own means yeah so um yeah and as you say it's a small island so for so many accounts you know witnesses you know events that have happened all pointing to this one thing mm. you know you have to you have to i think yeah. you have to believe in yeah. it to an, i mean i like i like all extent. of the theories to be honest i like all i think all of them in some way I think they could all work. are plausible yeah absolutely um i don't know exactly which one i i, I prefer I don't, yeah. i'm not sure um it's the lesser of four evils i think if you were to stick with those four so, yeah. sort of theories really i don't think either one is you know is, is particularly great you know i think if we stick to or if i stick to you know my theory on a lot of these other sort of cryptids then i'd be more inclined to go down the sort of the interdimensional sort you know of what I've, route i've found personally since we've <laughs> Since we've been doing since we've been doing this, and we've been doing mm. this over a year now, yeah, I had some solid ideas in my head when mm. we first started. So did and I. And <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, very, very different ideas very different. between us. Um, but I've noticed that as time's gone on, and we've looked at loads of these, loads of these other different cryptids going yeah. through the past year or so, that my ideas and theories have mm. become more fluid yes definitely. And, I, and they haven't been able to settle yeah and i haven't been able to settle on okay and this fair. is what i think is happening mm. because there's so much that is happening mm. i think you'd be i think you'd be remiss yeah into into thinking and into to, to putting it down onto one thing into one yeah, idea exactly yeah i think you it know. lends itself to too many as you as, as i think what you were saying to yeah, to kind of put your finger on, right, it's that theory. Yeah. That's what I believe. That, you know, because you could look at all four and think, well, yeah, there's elements of that and there's elements actually of that. So, you know, so it's it's what we love about high strangeness, I suppose. Indeed. It's highly strange. Highly strange indeed. <laughs> and you, you can't, yeah, you can't sort of put your finger on it. But, yeah, yeah I guess to I guess to, to close, that it's, um, 
yeah, there's definitely something going on. There's definitely, you know, something out there. Um, I guess we'll never know really, you know, what it is, um, you know, until... Hopefully one day we'll know. Until someone we'll does manage to get hold of it, but... Uh, All those uh, ologies need to start speaking to each other. Yes, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, so I guess that, yeah, that's that's kind of... Yeah, I suppose it's getting a bit boring now of all these cryptids are sort of saying <laughs> coming off the fence on the in the same uh, in the same way. But um, yeah, I, it's I think it is very much uh, very much the same. Mm. You know, I think it's the interdimensional travel. Do they take the form that we sort of manifest through the, the emotion that we feel when we see it? So are they all horrific and well, scary because it's all fear and terror, or yeah, or do they do it based on who's who's looking that they know that they're going to be looking back is it a manifestation of their own selves you know be going very cole young yeah there. Bit jekyll and hyde jekyll and hyde ish i suppose yeah. yeah yeah i guess yeah and it could be right yeah that's that's i don't know if you've got anything more to add but no, no i think i think we're pretty much covered on that really cool okay then. well i guess on um on that note we can uh we can close so thank you as always for you know sticking with us um I hope you've enjoyed this one. We've certainly had. There's been a lot of, there's been a nice mix of, you know, sort of some, you know, humour, funnier stories, a lot of, you know, compelling stuff and, mm -hmm. you know, even bring it back to our shores with, you know, tying in the King Arthur the element. Arthurian that was a particular, stuff. yeah, particular highlight for me. I did like that. I like a bit of that. And, all. Um, and again, thank you to yeah, our listener for um, the field report. Yeah. It, yeah, it was excellent. It was really good to kind of read that and, and get a different perspective and, a, you know, a different take on a, on a legend that we otherwise wouldn't have, have known so so thank you for that um as always thank you to our uh, patrons james justin and manika um much obliged um much appreciated <laughs> as yes. always so um thanks for coming back and, and sticking with us um as scott rightly said we've got our um new merch store mm -hmm. say new it's still only been about a month or so yeah, since that. it's been uh, up and running um We've got some season one uh, sort of designs um, and a couple of OGs on there for, for you to have a look at. Um, but as Scott rightly said, we are working on a few reworks um, and also, uh, yeah, a couple of um, simpler sort of designs that have been requested. So, um, yeah, keep an eye out for for, for those as well. Um, and if you are interested in, in, in supporting us, um, see, we are on, on Patreon as, as we've announced. So, um yeah, just head to patreon.com forward slash cryptid ramblers podcast. Yep. And uh, we're there. We've got a couple of tiers for you to uh, pick from. Um, hopefully one will be of interest. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And we'd appreciate the uh, the support. Otherwise, and I know we keep saying it, you know, the other way that you can support is to get in touch. Yep. You know, share what we, um, you know, share with you guys, you know, like, subscribe, or, and just get in touch. Any theories, any cryptids you want us to look into? Um just yeah, any any corrections as we, as we've had, you know, yeah. any any of your own insights or sightings, then um, you know, then do do let us know. Um, but uh, otherwise, it's uh, goodbye from me. It's goodbye from me. And remember, never dad estai frera. Oh, okay. <laughs> Truth is out there in Spanish. Oh, hopefully. I like it. <laughs> hopefully. <laughs>